In the past, we've discussed strategy in terms of what type of materials you should be looking for first, second, third, all that still holds true. Today, however, we're going to talk about strategy specifically geared toward the case finding step of your research. When it comes to researching cases for law school assignments, you've likely experienced a situation where you found a number of cases on your legal rule, but the facts were substantially different than what you wanted. It's human nature to want to find that perfect case, the one that not only provides a directly on point decision on your legal issue, but also has basically identical facts to those in your case. If this is what you want, the fastest possible way to find it is to start your search with your facts. The weirder, the better. The problem with this type of searching, rather than searching on the legal rule, is that one, you probably won't get a lot of results. Two, what you will get might be completely irrelevant rule-wise. And three, you'll miss out on really good cases that provide very helpful analysis on your rule that have similarly unusual facts. Often in law school and in life, you'll find that a judge has not heard a case that's exactly like yours. You need to analogize different sets of facts on the same legal issue as your problem. So let's talk about how we might do that using an example you're all familiar with, the scope of employment test under the FTCA. Take a look at your keywords and separate them into two categories, fact-specific keywords and keywords related to the legal principles. If fact-specific keywords aren't getting you a good result set when you search, take a step back and use keywords that address the core legal question or rule. If that isn't working for you, try browsing through a digest to find cases on the relevant legal principle. Next, think about how you're organizing and cataloging your research. There are many different ways to do this, and all of them are fine so long as they work for you. Here's one way that we find works for us. We begin with a chart or a spreadsheet. If we have a multi-part test, as we do here, we might create a column for each test part and make a quick notation as we read cases regarding how that case came out on that prong and what analysis of the facts led the court to that decision. Notice how our fields include case name, citation, prongs one to four of the scope of employment test, and whether the actions were within the scope of employment. This is great for two reasons. First, our chart will make it less likely we'll have to go back and reread cases multiple times to remember what they said or why they were important. The other benefit is that as we look down each column, we can begin to place the cases along a continuum. Imagine at one end of the line here, we have within the scope of employment, and at the other end, we have outside the scope of employment. And we can take a look at the cases along the continuum and begin to see how our facts might fit in. A graph such as this can help researchers who are more visual or benefit from more organization to see how they can analogize to cases that fall close or far on either side. If you take only one thing from today's lesson, I hope it will be that finding a case with exactly your facts is not necessary or even always best. To start to frame your legal arguments, focus on the rule and analogize other fact sets to the hypothetical you're working with. If you have questions on this or other subjects, please ask us.